So hi, uh, welcome to the second Ask an Expert session, the one that follows up from week five. What I've done is I've taken the top four liked questions and I'm going to try and answer them in, in actually three videos because what I've done is I've taken the two of the questions which were both related to artificial intelligence and put them together as that first question. So in this first video I'll try and answer the questions what role, if any, will AI artificial intelligence play in the future of supercomputers and will supercomputers ever become self-aware? Now, I'm not really an expert on this subject, but I, I did anticipate it would come up on the MOOC, on, on, on the course. And one of the most important things I wanted to stress in the course was to make it clear when we use current supercomputers to make uh, predictions about the future, uh, it's not done in the way that you walk up to some semi-intelligent computer and say, oh, great computer, what will the weather be like tomorrow? What you do is you run a very sophisticated, very large, but fundamentally relatively mechanical model um, where the, the process of simulation is not dissimilar to what we did in the very simple traffic model, a set of mechanical rules that you apply over and over again to take um, a, um, a configuration, to take the weather and evolve it forward in time. So currently, um, that's the way we do simulations, but I know a lot of people are interested in AI. But just to answer a question which kind of came up elsewhere, supercomputers and computer simulation are used in designing supercomputers and the new semiconductor materials and the processes we might want to use to manufacture, to manufacture uh, ever faster processors. They will be designed using um, some kind of you know, um, simulation program which can um, model things at the atomic scale. And um, when we do very complicated VLSI, very large scale integration circuit designs, there are very sophisticated computer programs which simulate um, uh, C CPUs and processors at the at the electronic level um, at the to make sure that they work. So, so so computers are used in computer design. But I'll come back to this this question about AI um, just to answer a rel something. AI is going to have an effect on supercomputing because supercomputers are clearly very good at, at running AI programs. Uh, one of the the um, the buzzwords in AI at the moment is deep learning, which is where you um, you use something called a neural network to train the computer to recognize and classify various various scenarios. It can be used for face recognition. It can be used for you know playing chess. It can be used for for driving a car, and that is a very very numerically intensive operation. It actually boils down to fundamentally quite a classical uh, kind of calculation, very, very uh, numerically um, intensive, a lot of floating point calculations. But it turns out that these can be done very efficiently on GPUs. So people are building supercomputers which have lots and lots of GPUs on them because they will be very good at running these deep learning algorithms uh, and, and that's a, a step toward, towards AI. Um, the way it works is that we're not running enormous simulations um, because you can imagine if you're doing face recognition, you might be looking at a lot of pictures of people as a training data set. You might be looking at a lot of pictures of people to classify. So you tend to have a large number of, of tasks. So these can be spawned out to lots of separate processors, but each processor or each node will be very, very powerful. And, and so there's a, a new machine being constructed in the UK at the moment specifically for tackling these deep learning problems. It's called Jade. It's one of the new tier two services in the UK. And it has, I think, about eight of the brand new GPUs on each node. So each each node is really, really good at, at running these these deep learning neural network AI, AI algorithms. So, th so that's saying that supercomputers have a role to play in in the current approaches to AI, which are which are ways of of, of um, running algorithms which can do these tasks which previously we thought could only be done by people, but now computers are starting to be able to do, such as facial recognition and, and driving a car. Um, However, whether um, supercomputers will ever become self-aware or actually become machines which, which exhibit AI, I, I don't know. I mean, clearly, um, lots of power, lots of uh, computational power is going to be key in, in doing this if it ever happens. But really, what needs to happen are break, breakthroughs in algorithms. I, I think that all, although supercomputers will presumably have a role if people make great advances in AI. That's not the current limit. The current limit in, in developing more um, computers which could appear to be able to think and, and, and um, demonstrate kind of AI capabilities is not in not having enough computer power, it's in not having the algorithms, not having the techniques which allow us to do it.
And I'll actually come back to this in the third question. Somebody asked about, you know, is it better to inve invest in hardware or software? But you know, it will require continued breakthroughs in, in new algorithms and new techniques, new software um, to, to go towards AI. Um, and once that's done, obviously, supercomputers will be able to run that, hopefully run that software more efficiently, more quickly than, than a standard serial or, or desktop computer. But that's not currently the limitation. So whether whether the question is whether supercomputers will ever come self-aware is really a question of will 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 we humans be able to develop algorithms which have the capacity to become self-aware? If we can, then clearly a supercomputer will do better on those than a normal computer. But it's not supercomputers or or, or new hardware which is going to enable that um, which is going to enable that breakthrough. It'll be um, uh, it'll be advances in algorithms and software. And just to tie in with what we talked about in week five, the current um, ways of doing AI, uh, trying to to to, to um, make computers think in a more human way, aren't based on building um, um, models of the brain at the neuron level. That they're, they're they're based on running. Um, um, numerical algorithms which can classify and, and, um, and analyze data very efficiently. This isn't really related to the Blue Brain project where they were trying to, to simulate. That may have input into AI, but their aim is to simulate the brain, the human brain, or ma mammalian brain, so we can understand how they work at a neural level. That's not the current approach to doing AI. The current approach to AI is to running what are fairly classical um, uh, algorithms, but which are aimed at, at, um, at, at uh, classifying data, uh, fuzzy data, noisy data, in a way which previously we'd only thought was was capable by humans. So just to sum up, supercomputers maybe play a role in AI, but they're not the currently the limiting factor. That's not what's holding us up. What's holding us up is is the algorithms and the software which are able to to to, to do more human-like things. <laughs>